Chapter 2, Red Alert. Lunar Day, 188. Morning. I didn't hear about Dr. Holt's death until, well, after it happened. I hadn't been able to go back to sleep after overhearing his conversation in the bathroom. This was partly because I was excited to learn what he discovered, but mostly because our lunar sleeping quarters are horrible. Sleeping in low gravity is difficult to begin with. It's been a major problem with human spaceflight since day one. However, the idiots who designed NBA worked overtime to make the problem even worse. Due to space and weight considerations, no beds were brought to the moon. Instead, we all sleep on air mattresses that were specifically designed for minimum weight rather than comfort. They're stiff, they smell like burning tires, and they often leak. So, it's common to wake up in the middle of the night to find yourself on the hard floor, surrounded by deflated rubber. In addition, it's always daytime at Moonbase Alpha. All our power comes from the sun, generated by two massive arrays of solar panels. So, MBA is situated near the moon's north pole, where the sun never sets. Anywhere else on the moon, we would have had a 354 hours of night at a time, followed by 354 hours a day. To stay sane, all Moonies are directed to follow a 24-hour Earth Day, synced to the U.S.'s central time zone via mission control in Houston, Texas. But I've had a hard time adapting to life without regular phases of night and day. Finally, we don't have bedrooms. Space is too valuable at MBA for those. Instead, we all sleep in personal sleep pods, which are claustrophobically small chambers built into the wall of our one-room apartment. Each has a sliding door so you can close yourself inside, but no one uses it because that makes the claustrophobia even worse. The sleep pods are stacked two by two like bunk beds, so I have to climb into mine. It's more like a tomb than a bedroom. With all of that, it was hard enough to sleep on a normal night, let alone when I knew one of the most important discoveries in human history was about to be revealed. I tossed and turned for hours, then finally gave up and dragged myself from bed at 6 a.m., figuring I could at least check the slim screen for the latest news from Earth. However, as I clambered out of my pod, my six-year-old sister, Violet, popped her head out of hers. Morning, Dash, she chirped. Is it breakfast time? Not quite yet, I whispered, trying not to wake our parents. Go back to sleep. I hope there's bacon this morning, she said, ignoring me. Do you think there's bacon? No, I sighed. There has never been bacon here. And as far as I know, there never will be. Violet frowned for a split second, then returned to her usual perky self. Okay, I guess I'll have waffles then. She scrambled out of her pot and drifted down to the floor next to me. On Earth, Violet barely weighed 40 pounds. In the moon's weak gravity, she might as well have been a leaf. She was wearing bright pink Hello Kitty pajamas, and her dark hair was sticking out every which way, making her look like thing one from the cat in the hat. Is the rocket here yet? I turned to her, surprised. In my excitement about Dr. Holt, I'd completely forgotten that a rocket was due that day, bringing new moonies and supplies. The rockets only came every few weeks, which makes their arrivals one of the rare breaks from the dull routine of lunar life. No, it's not due for another few hours, if it doesn't get delayed. Oh, maybe they'll have bacon. I wouldn't get your hopes up. Too late, they're up. Want to play chess? You don't know how to play chess. I know what all the pieces do. That's not the same thing, I said. Did someone mention chess? My mother slipped out of her own sleep pod. In the one next to hers, I caught a glimpse of Dad, who groaned at the early hour and yanked the covers back over his head. Obviously, Violet's refusal to whisper had woken both of them, although Mom, as usual, did her best not to show any annoyance. I've got time for a little chess before breakfast, she said, tossing Violet's hair. The two of them looked so much alike, with their frizzy hair, dark skin, and green eyes, that people often teasingly asked if Mom just cloned herself. Mom looked to me. Unless you want to play something too, then I could pick a game for all three of us. Oh, like Monopoly, Violet exclaimed. We can play the moon base alpha version. No thanks, I said. You sure? Mom asked. Definitely. I was too keyed up to spend the next few hours playing a game, and I certainly wasn't about to play one that took place at Moonbase Alpha. I felt trapped there enough as it was. You are lost, Mom chided. 
Then she turned to the sunscreen. Computer, chest please. Although computers have been able to control everything in homes on Earth for years, Mom and Dad always hated the idea. They never installed a control system back in Hawaii. But at MBA, the base computer is hardwired into every room, eternally ready to do anything we ask. Fortunately, we can adjust its personality in our private quarters. So Mom and Dad selected the funniest voice they could find, an outrageous, high-pitched German accent. It would be my pleasure, the computer squealed. What version of chess do you desire? Mom stifled a laugh. <laughs> Surprise us she said. I will do my best, Monfrel. On our only table, the slim screen surface shifted from the standard simulated marble screen saver to a three-dimensional holographic chess game. The computer had selected an extremely ornate version with pieces that looked like they'd been molded from pure gold and silver and studded with precious gems. Ooh, Violet gasped. Can you make my pieces pink? I'm afraid I don't have the ability to admit odors, the computer replied. Therefore, I cannot make them stink. Not stink, Mom snapped. Pink. Can you make her pieces pink? The computer makes this sort of mistake a lot. Despite billions of dollars in research and development, no tech company has perfected voice recognition software yet. Even the most state-of-the-art systems screw up. There's a rumor that World War III almost started when the computer in charge of the North American nuclear missile system misinterpreted a commander saying, I hate syrup, as annihilate Europe. I'm terribly sorry for the mistake, Fräulein, our computer replied. I will correct this right, ar right away. All the golden chess pieces instantly became neon pink. Violet clapped, Violet clapped her hands with delight and sat at the table. Like the beds, all our chairs at MBA are inflatable, uncomfortable, on widely cubes of cheap, squeaky rubber. Whenever you sit on one, it sounds as though you just passed gas. Mom pulled up an inflated cube across from Violet. All right, Pumpkin, you go first. Just so you know, chess isn't Mom's standard pastime. Usually when people hear my parents are scientists, they assume they're awkward, unathletic nerds whose idea of fun is doing long division. That drives me nuts. My parents are the least nerdy people you've ever met. Mom swam competitively in college and competed in triathlons up until we left Earth. Dad is a rugged outdoorsman. He summited dozens of mountains and once free climbed El Capitan in Yosemite in a day. They met on a class five rafting trip down the Snake River. But more important, my parents aren't unusual. I've met hundreds of scientists, and most are almost as athletic as, and adventurous as my parents. I'm not sure how the whole idea that scientists are nerds ever got started. On Moonbase Alpha, the residents aren't merely brilliant, they are also incredibly physically fit. The NBA gym at peak hours looks more like the locker room of a pro soccer team. Unable to focus on the chess game, I turned to the main slim screen in our room. This one is enormous, taking up an entire wall. We don't have a window. Almost no one at MBA does. As windows are as, uh, as windows are insanely expensive to deliver and install in space, so we use a screensaver to give ourselves a view. It was currently displaying Hapuna Beach on the big island at sunrise, waves lapping on the sand. Frankly, I prefer this to a window. We can project anything we want, while the surface of the moon is dull and gray, and since there is no atmosphere, it never changes. Computer. Bring up the home page on the big screen, I said. Ja, menhe, Hapuna Beach vanished, and the MBA home page took its place. I scanned it quickly, hoping to see that Dr. Holtz had called an important meeting for all residents. But there was nothing. In fact, the page hadn't even been updated recently. The previous night's Lunar Book Club meeting was still listed as the next upcoming event in the calendar. I couldn't wait in the room any longer. It was feeling even smaller than usual to me. Although Dr. Holtz had said he wouldn't be revealing his discovery until 7 o'clock, I figured he might be too excited to sit tight as well. Maybe he was already down in the communal kitchen holding court. I went to our bureau to grab some clothes. Going out already? Mom asked. What's the hurry? I'm hungry, I said. You didn't even check the World Series scores, Mom sounded slightly suspicious. I checked them in the middle of the night. I said, Charlotte beat Vegas, six to three. Dad groaned from his sleep pod. You're kidding. No, William Higgins hit a grand slam in the eighth off Jed Bynum. What were you doing up in the middle of the night? Mom asked. 
bathroom. Revenge of the Chicken Parmesan, yeah. Didn't take long for me to pick out clothes. Since the moon base is kept sterile, our clothes don't get very dirty, which is good as we have limited storage space and only one laundry machine at MBA. Luckily, even if you work out hard, your clothes don't end up smelly as it's the dirt and grime mixing with your sweat that makes it stink on earth. Each pair of clothes can be worn multiple times before needing a wash. So we moonies brought only 10 outfits each for our three year stay. This is fine with me as I had basically worn a t-shirt and shorts every day back on earth Though some Moonies found life with only 10 outfits as awful as I found life without decent food. I pulled on my Wamiya Middle School surf team tee and yanked board shorts over the boxers I'd slept in. As I strapped on my smartwatch, I noticed a message on its tiny video screen. I'd missed a call from Riley Bach, my best friend back on Earth, the night before. I texted Riley that I'd call her later. She was probably still asleep. It was 1 a.m. in Hawaii. And besides... There was too much else to focus on that morning. I slipped into my sneakers and headed for the door. Violet abandoned her chess game and ran after me. I'm hungry too. I want waffles, 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 waffles. Dash, can you wait for your sister to get ready? Mom asked. No. I didn't even slow down my way out. It always takes her 15 minutes to get dressed. I could eat and be back by then. I don't need to get dressed, Violet announced. I'll just wear my pajamas. I thought you wanted to play chess, I said. I want waffles more. We don't have real waffles on the moon, of course. We only have reconstituted waffle-flavored substance. It takes like, tastes like coagulated maple syrup. But Violet loves it. She's the only one at MBA who eats it. I grabbed the doorknob ready to walk out anyhow. Dash, wait for your sister, Mom ordered. I stopped, knowing better than to disobey my mother. The last thing I need was to be sent to my sleeping pod. Let's move it, squirt, I told Violet. Let me get my slippers. Violet scurried back to her pod, singing a song about waffles. Violet could make up a song about anything. She once performed practically an entire opera about clipping her toenails. Now she was happily crooning, I love waffles, they're not awful, they taste so good.